Welcome back everyone to Cup of Code 01. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. The channel itself is taking a little bit of direction change and I wanted to address some of the emails that I've gotten in the past. So many people have commented that they're loving the videos, learning a lot from them. And then it was about a month and a half, two month hiatus from not uploading anything. Uh, an insanely busy summer. Um, unfortunately, a uh, family member had passed away. Uh, and on top of that, uh, children changing schools and moving from New York City to New York City. So quite a very busy summer. With that being said, let's, uh, let's jump right in and see what we're going to be doing. So I wanted to discuss a few points based on some other emails that I've gotten. One of them being, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the website itself for Cup of Code 01. Now, much has not been done. The biggest thing you'll notice if you go down to the bottom here, where it has uh, AI and then games, games, games with, with dates and there's nothing put on there yet. Again, I was gone for about two months. Uh, but with that being said, the channel itself is taking a direction change. So um, we are going to be completing the 100 days to Python Mastery. Those videos will continue. Um, the Python 2017 lessons, for the most part here, are pretty much complete from where they're going to go. That's, that's like extreme beginner level. That's like from nothing up into getting into the 100 days. Um, Python projects will still come on board. So we got five of them on now. Uh, I'll probably be getting up to a total of about 10 of them. Uh, so more of those will come in time. Those will be focused uh, on a project level basis. Um, a lot of times from what I'm hired to do, uh, I'll throw them on here as long as I don't have to deal with NDAs and so forth. The biggest thing here, I have machine learning with Python 3. This is the definitive guide to pandas. This series, uh, we got four, and I think I recorded like six or seven videos on it. I may finish those up. I may not. Um, the primary thing is with pandas you're going to be using them when we do ML and AI. And I didn't feel the need to continue on uh, belaboring on data visualization. I'll get to a reason for that in a moment. Uh, one, it keeps changing. But two, uh, you can learn a couple of ways and stick with those. And if you need to learn new ways, you can look those up. It's not a necessarily a reason for a video series to deal with it. Um, so then the biggest direction change is right down here. Games, games, and games, all in Python 3. I have, I did some games mostly for my kids. I have two young boys. And that was also the primary focus for this channel in general. Um, my, my mindset is that I want to be able to put online, I want, to, I want an archived version, if you will, of everything I'm building and doing and coding so that five years, ten years from now, either one of my boys or anybody's kid could sit down knowing absolutely nothing and in a matter of, say, two years, uh, have an indispensable skill set. And that will lead me into the next portion of this as well. So, again, I said we're getting rid of the Pandas for Python series. It's going to be replaced with a very focused um, project series base, which is only going to be artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. And with that, it's going to be covering computer vision, different Arduino product, um, projects, um, a lot of NLP, that's the natural language processing, essentially mostly cutting edge stuff, a lot of emulators for video games teaching AIs and, and, and so forth on how to play them. And then also what I do with my own personal time is a lot of the markets, the financial markets, utilizing AI in the markets to find not necessarily patterns, not some kind of a hidden pattern, but to use them to analyze the markets on a global scale, something that a human could just never possibly do because of time and the amount of information that's there, the amount of data. So almost like creating your own personal money manager, if you would. Um, all of that's going to be the primary focus of the channel going forward. But again, with the intent that somebody from nothing could spend one to two years going through everything and just having an indispensable skill set uh, for life. Now, that leads me to my next portion. I've gotten emails from people who um, would take, uh, say, six week or six month or sometimes even only a week course and think it's going to change their career based on taking one of those courses. Uh, first of all, so you, have to, you have to understand, forget the course and forget where you're taking it. What is the skill set that you're deriving from at number one? And then what are you doing with that skill set to um, impress potential employers, if it's a job you're seeking, to say, hey, look what I can do with the skills I've learned. And I say that because I've gotten things from uh, primarily in data science and uh, even web development communities. where, And I don't personally deal with web development, but... Uh, people saying, you know, I've taken this thing and I can't get a job interview, you know, I can't even get an interview. Why? 
And I'll simply say, well, show me what you do. Show me what you do on a daily, on a weekly basis. Show me what you're creating. Show me, you have a skill set. What are you, what are you applying it towards? Um, and they have nothing. So ask that person, if you were the employer, would you hire somebody who showed up and said, yeah, I took this course, but I haven't done anything with it. And I have nothing to show that I can do all this. Or I have like three projects that I did with the course. Ooh, um, yeah, no, I wouldn't. And you shouldn't either. So with that being said, uh, if you're going to be doing a career change, or even if you're trying to, you're already in computer science, and you're trying to up it, this is not something you're going to get in six weeks or six months or a year. Even five years into that, you're still going to be learning new pieces of, of coding. Um, the software is always evolving. Hardware is extraordinarily evolving, and that changes the game and, and so forth. So it's you want to focus on a skill set that's indispensable. And that leads me to, I just want to show some articles that came up this last week. Um, this was um, coding boot camps are closing across the nation. And, uh, and this is where it says they're facing a reality check. Employers don't need this. There are some people who need web developers, web developers, but they don't need them in the numbers that these coding boot camps are putting out. Um, and it's kind of cool. But like, oh, look, I can build this website. I can do this. I can do that. Yeah, but at the same token... There are companies building AI and ML versions that can do a lot of this automation for you on web development, and that's only going to get better, which means that the human element will be gone. Um, so I don't think it's a wise investment. And again, the, I mean, some of the schools are closing. The only ones who are staying alive, if you will, financially, are those who are offering more than just web development courses. Um, and a lot of that is usually data science. And that leads me into the next uh, article here, which is a nice article. Uh, that's on D Data Science Central. And pretty much what this says, I'll sum it up for you, is that like most of the jobs that AI, ML, and DL are, are um, making headway in, uh, and then they always say, oh, the fear it's going to take over the job kind of a thing. Well, that even falls for data scientists. Um, right now, the data scientist is acting as a translator with getting the data in a format and... Um, accumulating it in a way that is applicable to the algorithm that they're using. Uh, but it's only a matter of time until AI can also do the same thing uh, and much more efficiently and a hell of a lot faster than us mere weak humans could do it in. So even data scientists, people taking these boot camps, they think they're going to, you know, jump out. It's the sexiest job of the 21st century crap. Um, even they're forecasting that they'll even be replaced and unemployed. So the, you don't want, my, my point is, the skill set that I feel is the most important is having the ability to understand, implement, utilize AI, ML, and DL, and whatever else is going to come forward with that. But again, it's the skill set that is what is important. Um, and this was just a nice little uh, pictorial that NVIDIA had up where it's showing just the progression and primarily the way that I also look at it, which is AI is the big one, then ML is a little sub, sub folder of it, and then deep learning is even a more focused version, uh, utilizing concepts from both AI, ML, and then bringing in uh, alternative um, algos uh, in, in general. Um, I mean, that's, and that's where we're going to spend a lot of our time. So again, I'm very happy to answer questions, but my primary focus with doing this is for creating a, um, a, a timeless version of education so that somebody could sit on day one with nothing and get to not only understanding and implementing, but utilizing in their own life, uh, AI, ML, and DL on a daily basis. Um, we're going to do some fun, stu fun stuff as well. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, and for the next video, people have asked me about what kind of a PC system I use. So we're going to do a quick video showing exactly what that is. And I'll also let you know what courses um, I'm going to be learning from as well as we move forward. All right. Thank you, guys. Take it easy.